Hello and welcome to another edition of LBAM Radio, the podcast dedicated to informing you about the toy we all love, Lego. Um, today I am joined by a very special guest, Braden May, aka Make Noise Man Studios. How's it going, Braden? Very well. Um, just want to let you know it's Brendan, though. Brendan, ah, uh, I, I got, I, oh man, I got that wrong. Sorry. Probably, no problem. <laughs> Alright, so, uh, to those who it may concern, we're not related, even though <laughs> we've, we've got the same last name, we're not related, so, just in case anyone was wondering, so, uh, tell our listeners out there who exactly Brendan May is. Well, hi everybody, my name's Brendan May, as Kanan told you, um, I run Make Noise Man Studios, it's a channel on YouTube, and, uh, I make Lego stop motion videos for the most part, I've dabbled in some other stuff, but... Lego stop motion is my favorite, and I've been doing it for, uh, I don't know, just, just seven years, I think. I think I started when I was 10, but um, only seriously started since 2010, so that's four years now-ish. Uh, yeah, that's all there is to say, really, I think. <laughs> awesome. So, uh, how did you get started with brick filming and, I guess, Legos in general? Well, Lego's easy. That was something that um, I've loved since I was little. Uh, my first Lego set I ever got was one of the tiny Harry Potter ones. It, uh, went, uh, it was from the Sorcerer's Stone when Malfoy steals Neville's Remember All on brooms flying around. Uh, I have a little brother named Jared who's just a year younger than me. and uh, So we've always been very close in age. Together we, uh, we collected Lego and did a whole bunch of stuff with it. We for many, many years, like playing with it and building stuff and collecting it was awesome. And when I was 10-ish, I don't remember what gave me the idea to start. If there was one particular brick film I saw that made me think, I want to give this a try, I'm not sure. Um, you know what it might have been? Uh, e Animation was a huge fan of that I, I remember watching when I was little and thought, that's so cool. So I wanted to kind of give it a shot myself. And, uh, set up a uh, little base plate on the kitchen table with a blanket behind it and taped a digital camera to the table and made a terrible stop motion video. And, uh, and I, I kept going and several more terrible stop motion videos and they got gradually less terrible as time went on, I think. And uh, that's it. Still doing it today. Awesome. So, uh, what... You had that first channel with, I guess, your older brick films. Why did you change to a different channel? Um, it it felt a little bit like a a new chapter in my life as a, as a YouTuber, I suppose. I had got the the last video that went up on the old channel. I think was might have been Escape from the Separatists. I think it was a crummy video I made in I used Movie Maker for that one. That was the only video I made in Movie Maker, and. Uh, I stopped making it because I was bored, so I ended in a stupid way, like a monster coming in going, cut, stop making the movie, and then it ended. Okay. Um, so after that, I got some lights and a screen and a new camera, and it kind of felt like, wow, this is a new era in Make Noise Studios, so to speak. So I thought, well, I, I'm going to go ahead and start a new channel. And... Um, that's what it, also, the new channel is under my own name, whereas when I made my first one when I was 10, it was under my father's name, so it said Brian May. And so at this point, I was old enough to go, all right, yeah, this is going to be my own YouTube channel. So the first video I think you put up on your channel was the Star Wars Episode Three trailer. There were a whole lot of advancements there. What kind of changed between that video and the ones you had on your previous channel? Well, that was the product of a lot of the new equipment that I got in that phase that I just talked about. Um, that was the first time I ever tried using a green screen, and uh, it you know, it worked to a certain degree. You can you can tell pretty easily. You can see the green fuzzy this around the characters and stuff. That I was uh, definitely a novice. Um, like I said, a new camera, so I had a lot more control over the uh, focus range of focus, and wasn't so many um, blurry shots, and. Uh, I think that was also the first time I started getting involved with um, After Effects, uh, the After Effects, and started doing some special effects and kind of lightsaber stuff. And uh, yeah, that was that was a big jump from the one before. 
I think her next video was Call of Duty. Uh, what was kind of the inspiration behind that? The zombies one? Yeah. The inspiration for that was, um, I have a friend named Hunter, Hunter Freeman, and uh, he's a very good buddy of mine. He's a musician. We played in a band together. And she, uh, she said, dude, you should make a zombies video. And I was like, uh, okay, I'll, I'll check it out. And I was originally, I, I, anyone who's kind of visited my channel knows that I like trailers for things. I like making new trailers for movies and all that. And I thought, yeah, well, I look up, looked up the, the zombies trailer. I thought, yeah, that'd be cool to reenact. He was like, no, not a trailer. Make like a, a, a round, make a round of zombies. And I was like, are you kidding? That's no way. That's impossible. Um, so I was like, no. And he kept, uh, kind of pestering me about it. And then I thought, Okay, fine, we'll give it a shot. So he kind of helped me plan out how we're going to do this by taking a camera and putting it on a little mount and the set in a way that the camera could kind of fit through and making this first person thing. And so, um, yeah, I definitely owe the, owe the idea to him. And actually the, the co-op player, um, Dempsey in that first, um, match, is, the, uh, gamer tag is Fester Freeman over him and that's Hunter's, uh, gamer tag. So that's, uh, tipping my hat to him for the idea. <laughs> Uh, so, that was really neat, I thought, how you did that, to where it was like, uh, I guess the term's first shooter, first player shooter game? First person shooter, yeah. Yeah, yeah. where all you see is the hand with the gun. So, how, mm -hmm. how'd you achieve that? Um, that was done through, uh, a little bit more green screen, well, actually, blue screening, in this case. Um, I made the switch to a blue screen a little ways down, and, um... So the, the, the raw, raw footage, so to speak, was shot just with the camera moving around. There were no arms or guns or anything on the screen, just a camera and then the other characters, you know. The, 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 and uh, then afterwards, um, I set up uh, an arm by itself, like a detached Lego arm on a little stand, a little pillar with some stick attached or whatever, in front of um, a blue screen. That's took the the shots of just the hand and did some little minor animations, you know, like the gun kind of shooting up or falling, switching out for a different one or whatever, and then um, rendered out those as their own little clips of uh, a hand on a blue screen. And then in Adobe After Effects, you can superimpose that over the raw footage, uh, chroma key out the blue screen, and then you're left with a hand in front of the original footage, right? And then it's just a matter of masking and kind of mapping the hand to follow along with uh, the motions and... Um, Adding the special effects from there. Oh yeah. So um, yeah, that was really cool. And of course, if anyone wants to see the behind the scenes, you can go to the Make Noise Man channel. All right. So the next video you did was Bane of the Sith. Ah, uh, yes. A really awesome video. What was yeah. the inspiration behind that, and what all went behind all that? voice acting, the special effects. It, it was really awesome, I thought. Well, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, Bane of the Sith was based off of a Star Wars novel that I read uh, called Darth Bane, Path of Destruction. And um, it, I read it for the first time when I was, oh I, gosh, I don't know, young. And I liked it so much. I read it over and over and over again. I've read it eight or nine times probably by now. Just and it, it follows, I, for those of you who haven't read it, maybe have an interest in it, um, I won't spoil anything, but it follows this character named Bane, who was the Sith Lord who created the Rule of Two. So he um, forged this idea that there should only be one master and one apprentice. And um, it follows him as he you know, grows up as a, a normal person with this uh, a connection to the person he doesn't know about. And then some stuff happens, and he ends up going off to be a soldier, and then some more stuff happens, and he goes off to join this, this Sith Academy, and it's in this, this school, all with other students who are being trained to the dark side. And something about that was just so cool, in my opinion. And I was so fascinated with this book and the character, so I was like, I really want to um, make something out of Lego for it, because I thought it was so intriguing. Um, but up until that point, I had only really done the things that were pre-existing, right? Like, I've done... Uh, Star Wars, the Star Wars trailer, uh, Aragon, Rings trailers with, um, they were kind of recreating the trailer that already existed, right? Yeah. Oh, I Whereas, forgot to ask about those. Oh, yeah, I'll, no I'll problem. I'll get back to those in a little bit. Cool. All right. Uh, so, this, this was different because there had never been a movie made of Darth, right? But I really wanted to do it, and so, um, I talked with some friends and stuff, and we 
kind of came up with this idea to make make my own. So I kind of wrote a sort of a script a little bit. It, it was a um, I would love to go back and say it was all planned right from the beginning, all very well and uh, and structured and stuff. But it wasn't. It was kind of made up as it went along. But um, and got my uh, some friends of mine to come in and voice act, both um, teens and adults, and they all did a phenomenal job. It was great. Uh, and kind of did our, our own thing. I arranged the music for it based on um, Star Wars themes, and it kind of fell into from there. I, it's I think it's my favorite one that I've done personally, just because of the um, the backstory and the the, the novel that I liked so much, and the the way it came together was was it's cool to remember. So with the music, how do you create the music? Did you play it on a keyboard? Was it real instruments, or what exact, exactly little, did you do? A little bit of both, actually. I um I use a program called Pro Tools to arrange musically, and uh, I have uh, a lot of musical instruments here in the room, so what I can do with real instruments, you know, like guitars and bass and drums and stuff like that, I record with microphones for real. And um, what I can't do, like... Horns or uh, orchestra, for, for example, I have um, a MIDI keyboard to do that um, digitally and kind of mix those together, and they, uh, uh, that's it. Awesome. Um, so now going back, I guess, to Lord of the Rings. That was before the official thing came out. Why'd you yeah. do that? <laughs> yeah, some people in the comments section don't realize that. <laughs> They're going, why didn't you use the official characters? And I'm going, ah, look at the date posted. <laughs> And they say, remake it with the official characters. And I go, no, that takes a long time. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, uh, an Aragon trailer. Like, you did that one too, so. Yeah. That was kind of a spur of the moment one. I remember I was, um, in, in the car. I think we were driving, we were going on vacation somewhere, and we were driving a long way, and we watched Aragon in the back of the car. I remember thinking, this would be a cool Lego video, and uh, that, yeah, that one was kind of kind of spontaneous. I really like the Aragon story, though. It's one of my favorite um, books, series is. So, almost, almost like the Darth Bane one, it was that motivation of I wanted to make something with it just because it's something that I really liked and connected with. I, the same goes for everything I've done, actually. Lord of the Rings and Star Wars included in that, just stories that really intrigued me or that I really got really into. I wanted to kind of re uh, re reenact in Lego. It's, I guess you could say a little bit that that playlist kind of reflects my own interests, right? Yeah. So. Yeah, so uh, I, I hated how the Aragon movie ended. Did they ever make any more movies for it? No, they did not. It, it was a real bummer. And I have mixed feelings about it because I personally really enjoyed the Aragon movie. I thought it was great. Lots of people hated it because it was so different from the book. And it was. It, it did diverge a lot. But I like to consider them separate entities because I love the book. And then it's three, uh, six, three next books in the series. And I also love the movie, but they didn't really go together and they, they made some choices. They killed some important characters that show up in the later novels and such, and such that um, they weren't able to continue the series partially because of these errors uh, they made killing off some characters. They may have come up with a uh, solution to that, but you know, the movie also just wasn't that successful. And I don't think it was, they had enough uh, financial encouragement to carry on. At least that's what I think. I'm, I'm not, I don't know for sure. That's just what I've uh, what I've heard and what I've read, um, which is a bummer because, like I said, I really like the Aragon series, and maybe some, maybe someday it'll get made again properly. <laughs> we can see the whole thing put together. I thought the film was a whole lot like the uh, Star Wars Episode Four. Um, the story it was the, the parallel is shocking when you put it together. <laughs> I know. It, you you, put, you posted about that a, a while back on the Tumblr, I think, too. Yes, I did. Uh, <laughs> I wrote a little little narrative uh, about a young boy who... Oh, I don't remember how it went. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so, so, I mean, the day after I watched that movie, I was like, hmm, this is a lot like Star Wars. Yeah, you can tell you can tell both stories in a, in a way neutrally that fits 
the one so well about you know a young young guy who lives with his aunt and uncle because his parents are dead or gone or whatever and then uh, uh, learns he has this secret power because this princess was on the run from a empire with this thing she stole and then this wise old man comes along and then the empire comes and burns down his house and kills his uncle and so he runs off to join the rebels with the old man and then the old man dies along the way it's it's crazy <laughs> <laughs> oh so uh um, the next video after Bane of the Sith was Skyrim. Uh, yeah. That was an awesome brick film as well. Thank you. <laughs> what was the inspiration behind that? Well, it was totally the same as any other video. The reason for doing it was just that Skyrim, I thought, was a masterpiece of a video game, and I really enjoyed it, and uh, let's do something in Lego with it, because I thought it was great. Um... Following through with the other things, though, I, as I mentioned, I really liked doing theatrical trailers. That was the kind of the direction I wanted to go, was like taking not so much of a trailer for Skyrim, the video game, but what if it were a movie, right? Like, if, if Skyrim were being made, me, sorry, if Skyrim were being made into a movie, which would be so awesome, by the way, if that ever happened, what could the trailer maybe look like? So, obviously, in the, in the trailer, there were some de- shit, de- sorry, decisions that were made that a player doesn't necessarily have to make. For example, the Stormcloaks were the good guys, and the Empire were the bad guys. Which was, you know, I picked that because, just like Star Wars and Aragon, that's a very um, typical kind of scenario. You have an oppressive Empire and the Rebels fighting for their rights and stuff like that. Whereas in reality, in the in Skyrim, the Stormcloaks are not all that great. They're a little bit mean and a little bit racist and a little bit yeah, iffy around the edges kind of thing. And Neither is the Empire entirely bad. They both have their pros and cons, which is um, brilliant, by the way. I think it really helps add to the uh, just the lesser of two evils kind of aspect. But um, anyway, disregarding all of that, it makes it's the good guys for the sake of the uh, sort of theatrical trailer kind of thing. And that's how that turned out. <laughs> uh, so how did you do the dragon? Oh, yes, that was an, an exciting new venture that I kind of thought I was going to maybe pursue more and didn't end up doing so much, but I still kind of would like to and maybe plan to do so later. But that was the first time I ever tried animating anything in any kind of 3D program. Um, people have talked about, um, I've heard a lot about Blender, for example, but I've never tried it. The program I used was called um, Daz Studio, D-A-Z, and it... Uh, it, it, was really, it was really cool. Daz Studio on its own is... Um, a program that was, I think, I think it's fifty bucks, but it might, I might have gotten it on a, on a, like a promotional thing where it was free. I, I think it was actually for free. It might still be because then what you do is, is you get the program. I think the program is free actually. In hindsight, but if you if you get the program for free, but then it comes with a certain number of stock models. But then on top of that, they have the store where you buy the models that you want to use. So I got the program for free but then paid 40 bucks or whatever for this dragon pack that came with all of these different dragons with all of these interchangeable uh, decorations on their heads and their spines and horns and wings and stuff like that and so for a free program with this pack of rather than getting a you know five dollar program with models models that you're not going to use uh, i thought it was kind of a neat system where you just go for sure what <clears throat> excuse me what you're going to need right um yeah, it was a bit of a learning curve. I watched a lot of tutorials, and videos on how to uh, how to use it, and um, I am able. When I watch the Skyrim video, I'm able to look at look at it and go, "Oh, that uh, that animation didn't turn out too well." Um, if the a lot of the shots as they carried on, like you'll see a dragon flying up or something, and then then like in the last frame, you can see the wings to like completely flip around 180 degrees and stuff and it just kind of gets cut off right at the end there because that's when the animation started going kind of awry. So it gives me a good chuckle to rewatch that a little bit just because of my, um, well, like I said, it was the first time I had done anything animation wise, right? So it is a, a very novice job, but, uh, it, it, the job nonetheless. And, uh, it's a tool that maybe I'll be able to use. Yeah. I, I never noticed any of those, uh, errors. <laughs> oh, thank you. Maybe I shouldn't have pointed them out. <laughs> uh, so, uh, following video you did was an update video about 
you are now going to, for a, a, a good long time, going to be working on a long Lego film called From the Ashes. That's it. What exactly is that? All right. So, um, that's right. After Skyrim, I went off the radar for a little bit because I was putting this plan together. Um, the story started, I, I had a, a little unit of Lego club shooters that over time had kind of, you know, it was just kind of tinkering and put them together. I thought they looked nice next to each other. They all had kind of red uh, patterns on their armor and such. And, and uh, I thought, you know, that they look kind of cool together. I, and they're, they, you know, they're each a position, you know, there was a sniper and there was a, um, communications officer and there's a commander and stuff. And I thought they're really kind of neat. Maybe I'll do a little video with them, a little short, a short story, like, you know, 10, 15 minute little, uh, um, adventure thing with, with these guys. And, um, then I started thinking what that could be. And I got an idea and I kind of started to grow and who, cause I didn't want them to be clone, right? Because then that kind of makes it hard to have clone troopers to have individual personalities, but I, for some reason, I wanted to make them real people. And well, all right, well, why would real people be in the military full of clone troopers? Well, maybe volunteers. And what would they be doing that would be of any importance that a clone trooper couldn't do? Well, maybe the clone troopers, maybe sorry, maybe the separatists made this poison gas that attacks the DNA in every clone trooper. You know, kind of thing. So it was like, okay, this is maybe starting to make sense. But as the story continued to come together. It got longer and longer and longer and longer. And I was going, this is going to be way longer than 15 minutes. And then suddenly it was like, well, this is actually feature length. Wow. Okay. That's kind of cool. So at first I was like, should I go through with this? This is going to take a long time. And then I thought, you know, this this could be really cool if I go through with it. It's I, I'm really pleased with the story. I think it goes really well. I really liked the characters. And I thought, you know what? I um, I did say one time in a, in a frequent questions video I, I i said i would never make a feature length stop motion video and i take that back because i made the decision to do so and uh, i'm i don't regret that decision at all and uh, still working on it <laughs> <laughs> so do you have any idea when you may possibly be done with it or uh, are you not gonna say well that is a very good question and i really really love to say when it's going to be done and i would if i knew <laughs> it's um i've had a, several estimated release dates um along the way it originally i thought it was gonna be six months then into a year well there's a there's a lot of um, work that went into it beforehand Dur before i kind of stopped making video like i was writing the script during the skyrim video for example and then it kind of picked up from there and then there was a few months were spent just on voice acting and then all of that was done and stuff, and then it was just left to me to actually take the pictures, right? And that's where things start taking a long time because, as you or any other uh, brick filmer knows, brick filming takes a while, right? So the, the the release dates kept getting pushed back further and further and further, and then as as it happens, life throws things at you sometimes that set you back a little bit, keep you away from from doing stuff you want to do, and um, it just kind of kept getting delayed. So. Um, and that's a bit of a bummer, you know, but I, there isn't really anything I could have done about it. For, for example, the last, uh, um, six months or so, not six months, four, four months, like semester, why, well, since, since September, um, have been, uh, crazy. I'm, you know, I, I final year of high school and it, I have all my, tough course is all in the same semester, right? Plus the project that came on top, I was doing a promotional video for the school and that took up a lot of time and energy and stuff. And there's just no way I could have done any more work on it, right? Even though I really, really wanted to, I had to put it on hold. And I got to work on it in little bits and pieces here and there, but not nearly as, as fast as I was doing in, um, in the spring and the summer, right? And so I, it was unfortunate, but it was reality, right? Um, Actually, all of what I'm saying right now, I'm putting together a little update video I was going to put on my channel later this week, I think. Um, so I'm, I'm still going to do that, but just kind of touching based on where, I am, where I'm at and stuff. So that that semester was uh, mayhem, and it's over now. So yeah, we're moving into February where I've got, I had all my tough full classes in the first half, and now I'm moving on into my um, my easy period, so to speak. And obviously I can't 
predict exactly what's going to happen. Life always has a habit of throwing curveballs at you and such. But what it really looks like, I'm going to have lots of time to pursue my own projects, the most of which being from the ashes. So I, uh, I would say it's a very safe bet to say that my productivity rate is going to go way up starting. Well, I've, I've already begun filming it again now since February has uh, started and productivity is going great as it once did. And I would love to say it will be done maybe in the summer, but I hesitate to say anything of the sort um, just because, you know, stuff happens that sometimes you can't uh, anticipate or avoid. Uh, so yes, I, my personal goal is I would love to finish the video before I go off to university because that would just be a really great sense of closure and um, it would be awesome. If for whatever reason that doesn't end up happening, um, no need to fret. I'm going to be living in an apartment with my cousin and there's going to be room to bring my stuff with me so I can carry on working on it. And it'll, it, it will get finished. That, that's, that's the certainty is that it will get finished. I'm not quitting on it. I'm um, not doing anything, uh, to, to change it or stop it or anything. It, it will, and I just don't know when. <laughs> but I would love to say soon. I can tell you I am for sure over halfway done. And I don't mean to say, oh, only halfway done. It's been two and a half years. Are we going to wait two and a half more? <laughs> uh, there was, like I said, a lot of work that went into beforehand, writing the scripts, doing the voice acting. That's all done for the entire film. The whole film is acted, the whole film is planned, and the music is all assembled. Um, the only thing left to do was take the pictures, right? So, and that's something only I can, I can, I can, I have to do alone, right? I can't have somebody come and help me with that. So it's just kind of me sitting down and doing that as much as I can. And um, half of the movie is watchable. And the other half is listenable. So uh, eventually we're going to get to the point where you can watch the whole thing and uh, then I will share it with the world. What do you mean by closure? Like, you'll stop making brick films or... Oh, no, sorry. No, that's not what I meant. Uh, sorry if I got an impression. It, moving on to university is going to be a, a new chapter kind of thing. Kind of like I was talking earlier about how getting all that equipment was like, wow, this is cool. It's, it's like a new... Uh, a new stage in my life as a YouTuber, right? Moving out of my of my parents' house to uh, apartment in Toronto is going to be a massive new chapter, right? And um, I really do like the idea of moving into that with fresh palette um, of saying, you know what, From the Ashes is complete and uploaded, and that's done. I can move into this new uh, new stage of my life with a, an open plate to take on other projects I want to do, right? Like I said, I'll, I'll have room to bring my brick filming gear and uh, completely depend on making more videos and stuff, probably shorter ones, <laughs> um, as, as it goes on. But uh, it would be, it'd be really sweet to have From the Ashes finished with that. If it isn't, no problem. I'll just keep going. Um, but in my own personal goals, I, I want to have it. I also just want to have it finished as soon as possible because I want to share it. I'm really, really happy with it so far. And I'm going, oh, I can't wait to put this on YouTube, but yeah, I don't do that until it's finished entirely, right? Um, I could do it in stages. I've thought about that a lot, um, actually, because, like I said, half of it's watchable. I theory could put up the first four or five segments, right? Um, but uh, the risk of, you know, if I want to go back and change something or fix something or anything like that, and it's already on YouTube, that becomes very hard. So, for my own peace of mind, and you know, maybe I'll talk myself out of this eventually if it ends up taking too long. My ideal is to have the entire movie from start to finish done. I can sit down and watch it. Takes an hour and a half, two hours, however long it is, and go oh, there. It's finished. Now I can put it up, knowing that it's ready. So, I was just making sure. Yeah, sorry, I didn't mean to um, give impressions. No, I do not have any plans of ever stopping Rick filming or. Oh. Even my my adulthood, I'm going to carry it on as a hobby, at least. Maybe a part-time job. We'll see how, how forgiving the ad revenue is. <laughs> <laughs> I was going to ask what plans do you have for the future, but you already answered that. Oh, pretty yeah. Much. You know, what, what equipment do you use and uh, stuff like that for anyone starting out? Equipment that I use? Um, Anywhere from software to cameras to... Stuff like that. Sure. Filming All right. Equipment. Um, 
presently what I'm using is, uh, okay, I'll, I'll start with um, hardware. So my camera is a Canon T3i, uh, Rebel EOS T3i. I think that's its complete name. And uh, I got that in October, I think. Before that, I had <laughs> I had the T3 before that, the normal Canon T3, which I've had since uh, the the Christmas before last. I think I bought it on Boxing Day of 2012, and uh, I used that for a long time. It was it was awesome. But then um, for other purposes, I more live action kind of stuff like recording. Picture take. I um, bought a T3i on Kijiji because it has external microphone support, which I won't I won't get into a whole lot because that's not really brick filming related. But it had a lot of features that I wanted to for live action. Um, it also happens to have some extra benefits that make brick filming easier. But uh, anyway, yeah, that's the camera I use is the is the T3i. I like it very much. Um, lights uh, are just lamps, you know. Um, table lamps. I have some. Uh, kind of arm I, I wish I could tell you what the real official names of them were but like arm kind of studio lamps that you might have for you know drawing table or something like that uh other equipment Try, uh, you know a tripod obviously and then um a blue screen set up behind made on a connects stand you know keeping it low budget yeah and then um alright software wise on the computer I uh, I work on an iMac, first of all, as I, uh, I prefer Apple for uh, edit purposes and such. Uh, the program I use is Final Cut 7, Final Cut Pro 7. I think they're on uh, 10 now, Final Cut Pro 10, maybe? I wonder if I'm, I'm not sure. Anyway, mine is 7. I got it years and years ago when I got my first um, computer and started work filming for... Uh, you know what? It was the same... There you go. That's going back to the same thing. It was between the channel switch. I got a computer and a new program and stuff. There you go. That's even adds even to the new stage. Uh, okay. So yes, Final Cut Pro Seven is what I used to. Edit. I've always used that set, but I have never changed that. Um, I mentioned earlier about Adobe After Effects for special effects and masking and all that kind of all that jazz. And then, um, I used to edit audio in Final Cut. Like there's the, the audio section underneath. You can put in audio tracks and stuff like that. But as of the first Zombies video, I've done that editing in Pro Tools too. Just like I did music, I've just used Pro Tools as a completely separate program to arrange the audio um, after learning how much uh, flexibility and more possibilities I had doing it that way. I think that about wraps it up as far as what I use currently. <clears throat> uh, you would ask me about Somebody starting out, what kind of equipment they would need, in my in my opinion. Uh, you don't need much. I, I like I said, I started just taping a little camera at the table, right? Like, um, you need you do need a camera of some kind to capture the be it a, a digital camera or an iPod or something. Um, actually, I I won't get into the story too much, but I just did a short little um, stop motion workshop at my school last year. And um, we used even just the webcams on laptops. <laughs> so doing that to, to make the, they just kind of angle the screen down to the what they wanted to do. Hey, you know, something to take the footage with. Um, ideally, a tripod to keep it steady. They showed the extra money to get that. that would be very wise indeed. In my opinion. Uh, some proper lighting would be great too. You know, just some table lamps. You know, nothing, nothing fancy there and um that's it really that's all you really need is a camera and just that's it the extra stuff makes it better but to start out you know go to it grab a camera and, and give it a shot editing wise that's where you got to get a little bit more specific um i understand there are programs out there like apps that are made for it made for lego stop motion that like uh actually, i actually think i stop motion is that an app somewhere i'm not sure i haven't ever tried them or looked monkey yeah. jam is another one i've heard um so, you know, I'm sure some, some people out there maybe who are listening have given that a shot and love it or maybe don't love it. I'm not sure. I haven't ever tried it personally, but I'm sure I know people do use them, and so they must be good uh, good for them. And, uh, yeah, that's it. Some, some, some sort of editing program. A camera and an editing program. That's all you need. <laughs>
do you have any tips for someone starting out not as far not like software or hardware like just starting out in general with filming and stuff starting out in general with filming do you mean brick filming or yeah, filming brick, in general brick filming. all right uh, um be patient <laughs> That's what I'd say. You know what? That applies to um, live action filming too. It's just, you know, whatever you're doing, keep it cool. Don't get frustrated. Things happen, you know? It takes a long time, especially brick filming. It takes ages. Don't get discouraged if it's taking a long time. Um, just, you know, if something doesn't, if you're not happy with something, you know, try it again, but just stick with it because you're going to finish it eventually and it's going to be sweet. Um, but it takes time. <laughs> uh, uh, keep it up, be patient, and um, it, it will be recording, I promise. Uh, Brendan, thanks for coming on, man. Well, oh, thanks for having me, it was a lot of fun. Please note, this podcast is not affiliated with the LEGO company in any way, shape, or form. The official LEGO website can be found at lego.com. Thanks for listening, I'm Kanan May, and this has been another edition of LBAM Radio. Thanks for listening. I'm living in a Lego house, I'm sitting in a Lego chair, I'm watching my Lego TV in my Lego underwear, and is it ever lumpy?